Uzbekistan's former deputy ambassador to the United Kingdom, Kadir Yusupov, is on trial for treason in his home country after claiming to be a spy during what appeared to be a psychotic episode and suicide attempt. Kadir Yusupov's son, Babu, has lived in London for years and is now fighting uh, for his father's freedom. Uh, and he's uh, with me now. Welcome to you indeed. Uh, this is obviously a very, uh, a very disturbing and troubling story. Could you just explain it a little bit more there? Sure, Adam. Thank you for having me Thank here. Um, so last I spoke to my father was 270 days ago. Um, he called me and he said he, was, um, he had insomnia for many weeks. He had heart problems. He was very fragile. The next day, um, I got a message from my brother saying that our father has thrown himself under the train. Fortunately, he survived. But um, when he was in hospital bed, uh, he admitted, apparently admitted to being a spy uh, for the West. Um, although we have never seen any evidence of that. Um, for following on from that, that week, uh, he was arrested and this was the last we saw of him. That was about eight months ago. We have some rather, rather disturbing, troubling pictures of him. This was after his, his suicide attempt, wasn't yes, it? Yes, correct. Yeah. That was in the hospital. Um, when he was arrested, we didn't know where he was initially, but what, uh, what transpired later on was that he had no access to a lawyer for about five yeah. months. And we only got access to a lawyer after begging the foreign office to intervene. They raised the issue privately with the uh, foreign ministry of Uzbekistan. And within a week, they allowed access to a lawyer at the end of April. And, and it, it is your argument that he's had some kind of mental breakdown that, you know, he can't take seriously what he's saying about being a spy? Well, we do know that he had a history of uh, schizophrenia in our family and he had those episodes before. Uh, he, was, uh, he was in semi-retirement. He left the civil service in 2009. The prosecution alleges that he started spying in 2015. Um, what we do know is that uh, the way he was treated in prison, so he had no access to a lawyer, he was tortured, uh, we, makes us think that he is not going to get a fair trial. The trial is held in secret. Uh, the media or uh, the family do not have access to it. Are, are, there, are there any details of the allegations? I mean, what he's supposed to have done, who he's meant to be spying for? Uh, no, so far we haven't seen any evidence. Uh, we know that the uh, sort of the lawyer can tell us certain things, although he has known disclosure uh, uh, commitments as well. Uh, um, but we haven't seen any. Evidence. So this case is is basically built on what he said. Correct. Uh, and perhaps uh, obviously under duress at a time of distress. Well, he was uh, held in solitary confinement from December till April. And as we, when the lawyer did get access, we found out that he was psychologically tortured and um, psychologically manipulated uh, for these four or five months. Um, the details I can tell you, mm -hmm. but it's, it's, it's sexual threats, it's threats of violence against my mother and my sister, threat of arrest of my mm -hmm. brother and myself, extradition to Uzbekistan. Now, what, what about um, your family? What access do you have to him now? Well, we still are not allowed to see him. Um, we can occasionally send a letter, which is a one-pager, and we, we, we keep things generically. Um, but the, yeah, it's, it's, been, it's been a tough time for our family. Um, and, and are your family all out of Uzbekistan? Or are you no, they're all in Uzbekistan, apart from you. me. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So I, in a way, I'm in a, I'm in a lucky position. I live in the UK, yeah. uh, but the, the, my brother, my sister, my mother are all there. Now, obviously, you're, you're fighting uh, your father's cause. Uh, do you want uh, official British involvement in this case or to raise the case or something like that? Um, yes, and the, the British government has been very helpful. Uh, the, um, our MPs, Greg Hans and Alan Duncan, who was a former Minister of State, um, they've been pushing the Foreign Office for, for, for them to get involved. Uh, and so far they, they've been trying their, um, I guess they've been trying their best to use diplomatic channels. Um, uh, right now what, we, what we're looking for is for more involvement from human rights groups, uh, advocacy, uh, advocacy law firms, or, or anyone who has uh, an interest in the region. And this, this is in the context of a time when, under the new president, uh, Uzbekistan is supposed to be moving, uh, modernising in a more progressive direction after the uh, rule of the late President Karimov. Yes, indeed. And, and you know, the good thing is that the, there are things that are happening, there are the progressive things, especially when it comes to the economy. Uh, on the political side, there's still work to be done. 
Uh, I know that the British government uh, under Boris Johnson have been uh, making efforts to have more, uh, sort of more of a relationship, which is a good thing. Uh, it's a country that has ancient civilization. It has potential, a, a huge potential for British tourists and businesses. But I guess we, we need to know what we're dealing with and uh, we need to know where the government uh, of Uzbekistan stands when it comes to fundamental things. Okay, Baba Yusuf, thank, you, thank you very much indeed for joining us. Well, time now for the weather.